Egzamin maturalny z języka angielskiego. Poziom podstawowy. Usłyszysz dwukrotnie teksty do zadań od pierwszego do trzeciego. Przed wysłuchaniem każdego tekstu usłyszysz dźwięk. W nagraniu przewidziane są przerwy na zapoznanie się z poleceniami oraz treścią zadań sygnalizowane dźwiękiem. Rozwiązuj poszczególne zadania w trakcie słuchania nagrań oraz w czasie przerw po ich wysłuchaniu. Zadanie pierwsze. Przeczytaj polecenie i zapoznaj się z treścią zadania. Jonathan, two years ago you stopped taking luggage on your travels. Why? At that time, I was asked to take part in a climbing expedition and write a research article about it. My colleague, an experienced climber, couldn't do it because he'd fallen ill. I'd never done any climbing before, but I wanted to try. However, carrying heavy equipment was so exhausting that I soon gave all my stuff away, and it turned out that somehow I managed without it. Next time I went travelling, I didn't take any luggage. Do you want to say you take nothing with you when you set off on your trips these days? Well, almost nothing, apart from my passport, toothbrush, credit card and some cash. And in winter time, I always take a warm jacket. But don't you need a jacket in other seasons? Of course I do. A jacket is absolutely necessary because it offers lots of pocket space. And the more pockets there are, the better. Sometimes I even ask local tailors, for example suit makers, to add some pockets to my clothes, so that I can carry more things. And I've also heard about clothes libraries across the world, which lend different items of clothing to travellers. I know. They're becoming popular. But to be honest, I'm not too keen on the idea. You never know where the clothes have come from, so I try not to use clothes libraries. I prefer to wear my own clothes, even if it means washing them over and over again. One more question. Have you ever been in an embarrassing situation because of what you were wearing? Sure, many times. Once I travelled across the countryside in Canada, and while walking across a field in very heavy rain, my shoes got very wet and dirty, and I had to leave them there. There was no time to buy a new pair of shoes, So I showed up at a local airport not wearing any. You can imagine the looks I got when I checked in. Quite a story. Thanks, Jonathan. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. Jonathan, two years ago you stopped taking luggage on your travels. Why? At that time, I was asked to take part in a climbing expedition and write a research article about it. My colleague, an experienced climber, couldn't do it because he'd fallen ill. I'd never done any climbing before, but I wanted to try. However, carrying heavy equipment was so exhausting that I soon gave all my stuff away, and it turned out that somehow I managed without it. Next time I went travelling, I didn't take any luggage. Do you want to say you take nothing with you when you set off on your trips these days? Well, almost nothing, apart from my passport, toothbrush, credit card and some cash. And in winter time, I always take a warm jacket. But don't you need a jacket in other seasons? Of course I do. A jacket is absolutely necessary because it offers lots of pocket space, and the more pockets there are, the better. Sometimes I even ask local tailors, for example suit makers, to add some pockets to my clothes so that I can carry more things. And I've also heard about clothes libraries across the world which lend different items of clothing to travellers. I know. 
They are becoming popular, but to be honest, I'm not too keen on the idea. You never know where the clothes have come from, so I try not to use clothes libraries. I prefer to wear my own clothes, even if it means washing them over and over again. One more question. Have you ever been in an embarrassing situation because of what you were wearing? Sure, many times. Once I travelled across the countryside in Canada, and while walking across a field in very heavy rain, my shoes got very wet and dirty, and I had to leave them there. There was no time to buy a new pair of shoes, so I showed up at a local airport not wearing any. You can imagine the looks I got when I checked in. Quite a story. Thanks, Jonathan. Zadanie drugie. Przeczytaj polecenie i zapoznaj się z treścią zadania. One. People all over the world love cooking with onions, but hate chopping them up. Now you aren't going to cry when you cut them. The sunion is an extraordinary onion which doesn't make you cry. It was created by American scientists. Today you can only find sunions growing in Nevada and Washington. I'm sure that will change when they become more popular. Two. You see, I wanted to make some tomato and onion soup. I followed the instructions, chopped the veggies into small pieces, and put them into the multi cooker. In the middle of cooking, it suddenly switched off. The veggies were still raw. I turned it on again. Twenty minutes later, all the lights at the top started flashing, and when I opened the multi cooker, everything was burnt and stuck to the bottom. What a disaster! Three. Have you heard of zoodles? If you follow health blogs, the chances are you have. Zoodles are noodles made of zucchinis, also called courgettes, which are cut into thin noodle like curls. Once they're cooked in boiling water, zoodles can be served as a pasta replacement. And can make a tasty change to soup or salad, or they can even be a main course. Try them for yourself. Our food expert will present some recipes in a minute. You can make them yourself and see how delicious they are. Stay tuned. Four. I have recently started a delivery service called Air Food One, which offers vegetarian meals. That match the standard menu currently available on planes in business class. My team and I specialize in light vegetable dishes. We prepare them from the best quality zucchini, tomatoes, cauliflower, onions, etc. My speciality is a soup made from all kinds of vegetables. I can guarantee that our dishes taste like the ones you can get at the best restaurants. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. One. People all over the world love cooking with onions, but hate chopping them up. Now you aren't going to cry when you cut them. The sunion is an extraordinary onion which doesn't make you cry. It was created by American scientists. Today you can only find sunions growing in Nevada and Washington. I'm sure that will change when they become more popular. Two. 
You see, I wanted to make some tomato and onion soup. I followed the instructions, chopped the veggies into small pieces, and put them into the multi-cooker. In the middle of cooking, it suddenly switched off. The veggies were still raw. I turned it on again. Twenty minutes later, all the lights at the top started flashing, and when I opened the multi-cooker, everything was burnt and stuck to the bottom. What a disaster! Three. Have you heard of zoodles? If you follow health blogs, the chances are you have. Zoodles are noodles made of zucchinis, also called courgettes, which are cut into thin noodle-like curls. Once they're cooked in boiling water, zoodles can be served as a pasta replacement and can make a tasty change to soup or salad, or they can even be a main course. Try them for yourself. Our food expert will present some recipes in a minute. You can make them yourself and see how delicious they are. Stay tuned. Four. I have recently started a delivery service called Air Food One, which offers vegetarian meals that match the standard menu currently available on planes in business class. My team and I specialize in light vegetable dishes. We prepare them from the best quality zucchini, tomatoes, cauliflower, onions, etc. My speciality is a soup made from all kinds of vegetables. I can guarantee that our dishes taste like the ones you can get at the best restaurants. Zadanie trzecie. Przeczytaj polecenie i zapoznaj się z treścią zadania. One. And one more announcement before we play more music. Just like last year, the City Council is inviting listeners aged 15 to 19 to take part in our annual competition. This year, participants should write an essay which begins with the words, If I were the mayor of my town. The authors should share their ideas on how to improve life in their community in an essay of no longer than 1,000 words. The deadline is November the 30th. The winner, selected by social media users, will receive $500 and will get the opportunity to interview a local politician. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. And one more announcement before we play more music. Just like last year, the City Council is inviting listeners aged 15 to 19 to take part in our annual competition. This year, participants should write an essay which begins with the words, If I were the mayor of my town. The authors should share their ideas on how to improve life in their community in an essay of no longer than 1,000 words. The deadline is November the 30th. The winner, selected by social media users, will receive $500 and will get the opportunity to interview a local politician. Two. The police officers on patrol in front of the famous Trevi Fountain in Rome often have to react when tourists try to get into the fountain pool. 
Last week, a fight over a perfect place for a selfie required their intervention. A 19-year-old Dutch girl and a 54-year-old Spanish lady wanted to take selfies in the same place and at the same time. First, there was an exchange of words. Then the women started fighting in front of a crowd of tourists. Luckily, two police officers managed to calm everybody down. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. The police officers on patrol in front of the famous Trevi Fountain in Rome often have to react when tourists try to get into the fountain pool. Last week, a fight over a perfect place for a selfie required their intervention. A 19-year-old Dutch girl and a 54-year-old Spanish lady wanted to take selfies in the same place and at the same time. First, there was an exchange of words. Then the women started fighting in front of a crowd of tourists. Luckily, two police officers managed to calm everybody down. Three. Have you seen the notice about the school sports day by the gym entrance? No, not yet. Why? Well, our school has to prepare our basketball and volleyball teams for the big day. We're going to compete against Richmond High. Oh, yes. Now I remember. My PE teacher, Mr. Buddiman, said something about it. Thank you for reminding me. I definitely want to take part. I'll go to Mr. Buddiman and sign up for the basketball team. But the notice says it's our geography teacher, Mr. Levito, you should see about it. Well, I'll have to find him then. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. Have you seen the notice about the school sports day by the gym entrance? No, not yet. Why? Well, our school has to prepare our basketball and volleyball teams for the big day. We're going to compete against Richmond High. Oh, yes. Now I remember. My PE teacher, Mr. Buddiman, said something about it. Thank you for reminding me. I definitely want to take part. I'll go to Mr. Buddiman and sign up for the basketball team. But the notice says it's our geography teacher, Mr. Levito, you should see about it. Well, I'll have to find him then. Four. I started my food blog last year. You don't need to be a great writer or a food specialist to become a successful blogger. All that's needed is a real interest in food that will keep you cooking and sharing your experience with readers. Creating a food blog can be enjoyable and profitable, but you also need to be an expert in using social media sites. And remember, food blogging is not just about posting recipes. Reviews of restaurants, useful tips and shopping recommendations will make it more attractive. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. I started my food blog last year. You don't need to be a great writer or a food specialist to become a successful blogger. All that's needed is a real interest in food that will keep you cooking and sharing your experience with readers. Creating a food blog can be enjoyable and profitable, but you also need to be an expert in using social media sites. And remember, food blogging is not just about posting recipes. Reviews of restaurants, useful tips and shopping recommendations will make it more attractive. Five. There's been a serious accident in central Scotland. Police say that at least 20 people have been injured. A bus which was carrying football fans from Edinburgh to a match in Glasgow hit the back of a lorry. 
All lanes on the M8 motorway near Whitburn are blocked as ambulances, police and heavy equipment are currently at the site of the accident. So, if you are driving to Glasgow, choose a different route. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. There's been a serious accident in central Scotland. Police say that at least 20 people have been injured. A bus which was carrying football fans from Edinburgh to a match in Glasgow hit the back of a lorry. All lanes on the M8 motorway near Whitburn are blocked as ambulances, police and heavy equipment are currently at the site of the accident. So, if you are driving to Glasgow, choose a different route. Six. A baby kangaroo was stolen from a Wisconsin zoo yesterday. The police are looking for the thieves who broke into the kangaroo house, but they haven't made any arrests yet. The zoo has some security cameras, but they were taken for repairs a few days before. Chief Inspector Bloggs said, This case is very difficult as we don't have any recordings of the incident. We're searching the area and we need people's help. If you have any information... Please contact the nearest police station. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. A baby kangaroo was stolen from a Wisconsin zoo yesterday. The police are looking for the thieves who broke into the kangaroo house, but they haven't made any arrests yet. The zoo has some security cameras, but they were taken for repairs a few days before. Chief Inspector Bloggs said, This case is very difficult as we don't have any recordings of the incident. We're searching the area and we need people's help. If you have any information, please contact the nearest police station. Czas przeznaczony na tę część egzaminu minął.